Looks nice over there. That's my side. This is Austin's side. <laughs> True. All right, so right now, I'm just kind of clearing a few little odds and ends up here. We're gonna put the hood on. Um, we got the you know, the body panel is starting to go back on, getting some body lines fixed. First thing with this kind of stuff um, is hinges, new hinges. <coughs> We've got new door hinges for the um, side doors and then new hinges for the, um, the hood here and really, you know, hood hinges aren't absolutely absolutely necessary because they're a pretty basic design um, from the factory. But then again, that's the reason why I like to go with new hood hinges because they are a basic design. They're pretty thin and flimsy when you get these big old school hoods like this. They kind of walk and bend and, you know, when you flex and put them down, they're just not sturdy enough for the weight of these, these hoods. So I always like to go to these billet aftermarket um, hood hinges, um, you know, things like this, uh, just to make the hood opening and closing a lot smoother. You know, when we're getting these body lines zeroed in, um, they're gonna be nice and tight, look nice. And we don't want any kind of movement going up or down, accidentally hitting, you know, it may sit and close right, but I don't want any kind of flex, um, that's gonna, you know, over time either cause you know defects in the paint from the flex or just absolutely making contact um so outside of that you know we've got metal work back here that we're doing um if you can't tell there's some metal missing here looks like this had gotten smacked at one time and even when we brought it in there were a few cracks in the paint right here um we kind of assumed something was underneath there you know we're doing a lot of metal work here trying to get this back into shape so it's not the worst. It looks like a pretty minor, maybe like backed into in a uh, parking lot at one point. But um, it's gonna take a little finessing over here to get fixed and uh, shouldn't be too bad. So you can see here, uh, there's some, some rust in the uh, pinch wheeled area on this back window. Go figure. Uh, you know, very, very common for this, these kind of cars. Um, you know, m mainly, and you'll see on some some good looking um, B-roll, but uh, it's, it's, it's starting to pit here and there and then even get some pinholes in here. Um, nothing too major. It's kind of happening on both sides and around the same area. And over, over there you'll see, we made a little repair um, because the, the rust, rust had actually come over into the actual exterior of the body and was pretty, um, you know, pretty holy, pretty bad. So we went ahead and put a whole new metal um, and bent it and got it all, you know, going with the body lines over there. And, you know, it's it's not perfect, but it's keeping us, you know, with fresh new metal um, and not, you know, puttying up the holes like it had been pre previously done. So just going around, fixing little things like that, because that's really all it is, a lot of little things like that. There's nothing really major um, on this. Um, super clean still, you know, we've got the, the floor in, which is probably what I would think would be the biggest piece. Um, the biggest issue with this, we've got the rear floor in. Now it's just kind of buttoning a few things up. And then we can start putting, um, you know, primer, high build primer and filler in and um, get everything smoothed out now that we got all these body panels on. But uh, let's go and get that hood on. I'm missing one washer. We're missing one washer. Yeah. We'll replace it somewhere. Maybe use two washers somewhere else. Maybe. <laughs> Go to the back of the car? Sure. You got it? Yep. Well, we're 
at a decent stopping point, or at least that's what I'm going to call it right now. <clears throat> um, it's closing. It's closing. And, um, you know, we've got a quarter inch or less pretty much at all of our points to do a little adjusting on. So that's usually, obviously not finished, but usually good enough to at least attack it um, with some finesse from there. You know, like I said, not too bad for just throwing it on with getting these panels on. Um, it should come together pretty nicely though. So yeah, that's kind of where we are on the body work now. So now it's just time to get all this, get this top coat off and see if we can find any other damage like we had, you know, those other spots. I'm pretty sure the front of this, front whole front clip of this car is fine. I haven't noticed anything. Austin, what do you think? Should fit good. There's not a whole lot of damage to it. Well, yeah. hardly any. A couple <coughs> of small dings, but yeah. nothing cool. of major counts. So yeah, then um, from there, we'll hopefully start getting, um, you know, some paint. Um, paint you won't normally see on the, ex not the exterior, but, you know, some of these um, package tray on the back there, the firewall, the frame underneath the um, floorboard um, as we start repairing a lot of this um, rust that's that's on here um, it'll start kind of looking like a consistent color and um, start putting some actual goodies on alrighty so if you didn't notice from the t56 transmission in the Instagram post this is gonna be a manual however it was originally an automatic so Two brakes, right here, or two brakes, two pedals from one brake pedal, um, and then the new hump for the the length of the manual transmission is a little farther forward. So it's really a pretty straightforward process. This goes into the original bracket um, that was there. You just have two pedals now. Uh, take out the automatic shifter and all that tower there. Cut a hole, weld this in. Easy as that. You got a, a manual. Uh, well, there is a uh, we're, we're, it's T56, so it's got the um, hydraulic throwout bearing and all that good stuff. So we do have um, a kit that'll go on the firewall, a um, little reservoir, and a, um, a little slave cylinder set up there to function the throwout bearing. And it's really not that bad um, to convert this over to T56 and uh, really have some fun with this car. So more of just that stuff that's just you know, rough in work, getting things in, you know, getting it ready to um, start putting all the fancy pieces on, um, the paint and all that. So we'll see how it comes together. So Tyler's behind the camera with a gun, but he has given me this to talk about. Um, when we first got the car in, the back bumper was pushed in a little bit, a little tweaked, not terrible. It was one of those things that's like, maybe it was put on in a rush a little bit, wasn't lined up right. We got the bumper off and noticed immediately that the reinforcement with the actual mount to the bumper was a little tweaked. Um, now, it's a real light hit, most likely a light tap, you know, backed into maybe a fence post or something small, just kind of pushed it up a little bit. Um, the problem with this reinforcement though is that they're getting harder and harder to find. And with as light as the damage is on this, we're just gonna repair it. You know, it's thick steel, so we'll get a little heat in it, get a port of power or something to hold it down real good, and we'll get it back to factory spec, line it up, measure it twice, make sure she's good as new. Thanks, Austin. So, speaking of smacks, there's another smack we found right here. Um, did a lot of metal work right here. This was a, essentially crunched in. Um, you know, we tried the uh, slide hammer and this is with this older metal slide hammers work sometimes but there's also a body line right here so it was really hard to pull this body line out and whatever work had been done before actually you know you take some paper and you roll it together and it kind of crumples up this looked like that you know this looked like regular old white paper that has been crumpled up so there were some waves in it um, that we had to get out so we just cut it all out um, without anything behind it to really you know stretch it back down or you know tighten it back up there just wasn't much we could do there so we put in a new piece um pretty much like right here um 
I kept that body line as you can see here, but with that, you know, it's not a full piece that's going to avoid um, glaze. And, you know, these cars, you put glaze on them. The, the, the key is, is keeping it thin, you know, eighth inch or less and not even that much, really a lot. Um, so right now we're just making it look nice and clean from the seam weld that I put through here, the little tacks that I put around. And um, I think it came out pretty well for, you know, when you first saw this and we first just kept grinding away at all the, the like half inch of putty that was here originally. Um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna cut that down, you know, extremely um, to a much, much thinner um, amount of, of glaze. So, you know, it'll look pretty good and, um, you know, nice and strong. So on, um, if anybody has ever owned an F body, um, you know, Firebird Camaro, you know how heavy and horrible these doors are, you know, they're not that, um, that BMW, you know, that you get. So I'm obsessed with that kind of stuff. I love when a door just shuts nice. And um, if, you want, if you ever wondered what $800 door hinges look like, these are them. Got these from Ring Brothers. You know, we're not spending this kind of money on every single piece of this. You know, we're putting a lot of money into the drivetrain. Um, but F bodies are just notorious for their doors hanging, being heavy. Um, you know, the weight of these doors are just so heavy that they over time pull on the, the stock design, this really horrible stock design, sorry GM, but um, they are what they are. So, you know, we like to put the money where it is important for these kind of things. So things like this, you know, $800 door hinges for um, an F body door, um, because you're gonna get a huge bang for the buck out of it and really have some nice smooth doors they're going to close nice. They're going to keep your body lines nice over the years. And uh, it'll just be super, you know, super luxury, um, something that you're not used to with this kind of car. So little differences like that kind of make it stick out. So so we got all that wiring out, if you can't tell. And um, I bet you never knew there was this much room um, underneath the F body uh, dash, all this, this firewall area here. Um, you know, we've still got to take the throttle out because the new system we're using is going to be a drive-by wire. Um, and not a drive-by cable. So what is the difference between drive-by cable and drive-by wire? Here it is. Super simple. So cable is you have your gas pedal here. I know, expert artist. I'll, I'll sell this later. You push the throttle down. It literally pulls a cable, manually pulls a cable that connects to the throttle linkage up at the, you know, the air intake. Um, you know, either on a carburetor or even some fuel injected systems, manually pulls and opens and allows more fuel, all that good stuff, more air, and um, it's all just connected by a cable. Drive by wire is all computers, wiring. So here you've got a little sensor that is uh, throttle position and it'll tell you wherever that throttle uh, or wherever you have this pedal. It'll you know, send a signal to the ECM saying, hey, he's got wide open, or hey, he's at idle. And then what it does, this is all wiring now, no cables, no nothing, no actual connection to the engine besides just some electricity. Um, the ECM then tells this throttle, hey, this is where you need to be. And you need to match this and this. And of course, the injectors and all that stuff works in tandem with it, coil, you know, all your timing. But essentially, drive-by wire it, and drive-by cable is ex exactly what it says. A cable connected straight to the throttle and drive-by wire is wiring, telling the engine, you know, where you have your throttle. Easy as that. And uh, of course, you know, we showed you this last time, the two pedals um, should bolt right up in there. Um, we're kind of getting this mocked up here um, for where this transmission, you know, the, the manual shifter is going to be. Um, and really it's just um, getting close to paint in here. A little primer, a um, little seam sealer here and there in some of the spots, but you know, the interior here, the, um, the rear um, top back there and everything in here should be welded. I mean, should be um, pretty well ready to paint here pretty soon. So this will start looking pretty nice. Can start putting new stuff in um, to get her back to, you know, pushing and driving around um, and uh, then you know finish with body work and then paint on and then it's put it back together it's that easy it's that easy to build cars wait a minute there bert do you have that mustache this entire video
Of course I have. And say it really loud. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Boom. Nailed it. Wait a minute there, Bart. Did you have that vi oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, man, we ruined it. It's over. Right. That's good. You gotta mess it up, though. Yeah. That's how I... Yeah.